in 1987, Mr. Santa, that negotiations must go on, parties must talk, and then thereafter, business must continue. Business is continuing as you predicted in 1987. Exactly what you said, apartheid economy is still continuing. Because when you went to the table, when business negotiated with the former liberation movement, you made certain things very clear. You are not prepared to surrender the land. You are not prepared to surrender the economy. You told them you can have a black president, but you are not going to do anything with our property ownership. When the liberation started in South Africa, it was not about voting. Voting was by the way. The formation of liberation movements followed the wars of dispossession. And Africans realized that if we fight as small groups, we get defeated. We need to come together and fight together under a progressive body. Fight for what? For reclaiming of our land. So you can't tell us we gave you 1994, that's enough. That's not what we formed the liberation for. We form the liberation to reclaim our land, to reclaim our wealth. The economy is the land. The economy is the mines and all mineral resources. The economy is the food. There is no food without the land. The economy is the banks, retail stores. We need the participation of our people in the technology and science because we cannot succeed to fight even diseases that, diseases that can be cured for as long as our people do not own pharmaceutical companies. The diseases that must be cured easily kill our people because pharmaceutical companies are owned by capital which is obsessed with maximizing profit at the expense of people. So we don't subscribe uh, to those types of... All of this infrastructure, me and you must agree about, which we are agreeing, will never be realized because it has been proven that taxes alone cannot raise sufficient capital for the state. We have been collecting taxes since 1994. We still have a problem of infrastructural development because the money is not enough. We said to capital, run the economy, take charge of the economy, and through you paying taxes, then we'll be able as a state to develop this country. The same capital which we said run the economy still is not paying tax. They engage in financial illicit flows. They engage in aggressive tax avoid avoidance in the country. No decisive legislation to deal with that. People take money in South Africa and invest it in tax havens. They are untouchable. If you do anything to them, that is an interference. The state must not interfere. People, the investors will leave the country if the state goes on interfering in the, in the economy. So we do not agree. We have this problem. We have this problem we are having today of an inequality which is growing, which is racially based because of the economy which is in the hands of capital. The economy is not in the hands of the state as we speak now. It's in your hands. You are the ones who are owning strategic sectors of the economy. And therefore, if anything that is in the hands of private sector is so excellent and successful, why is Africa not successful? Because the economy of Africa is not in the hands of socialist state or communist state. It's private owned. If capitalism worked for America and Europe, capitalism has not worked for Africa. Africa has not failed because of a capitalist, I mean, because of communist or socialist economic policies. It failed because the multinational and capitalists come and milk our resources, exploit our resources, and leave this continent without anything. So we do not agree. So a solution, which is very clear in the hands of the EFF, is that we need the expropriation of land without compensation. And people say 
that is extreme, that is unacceptable, land was taken through black genocide. We're not talking white genocide. We're talking legislation passed through parliament, democratic parliament, which will say the state is the owner of the land and the land shall be allocated to people who have indicated clearly what they want to do with this land and whether what they want to do, it is in the public interest and purpose. Because there are a lot of pieces of land all over the continent. They are idling. Some of them are even foreign-owned. Yet black people live in congested environments. They do not own a piece of land. When they try to occupy the land next to them, no, that land has been rezoned. It's owned by some fellow in London. We live like pigs in Alexander, in Langa, here, everywhere else, we have no land. And that is the first thing we need to do, expropriate the land so that we bring back the dignity of our people. There is no one who can have dignity and confidence if you do not own a piece of property. You remain a subject of those who own the means of production. We are tired of being subjects. We want to own.